I have a question for you, and this is for all you parents out there. If your kid did something wrong, like your kid broke the law, would you rat them out to the police? Would you pick up the phone and call the police? Say you're watching TV and you see this video and the anchor is coming on the, uh, you know, the TV screen. You know how these local news anchors are. This just in, we have breaking news. The police want you to look at this face. Do you know who this person is? Why do all of the local news anchors talk like that? Has anybody ever figured that out? Anyway, uh, you, you see this person and they, they're doing something wrong and the police have the video and they want you to call in. Would you, would you turn in your child? If your child was the one responsible for doing this awful thing, would you turn your kid in to the authorities? Would you pick up the phone and call 911 and say, come and get them? What would you do? The reason I ask this is because there have been a couple of incidents, uh, one of them yesterday, and this is getting a lot of national attention. So we told you about how the pro-Hamas mob has been desecrating all of these monuments and memorials all over the country, but one in particular has really gotten under the skin of a lot of people, and it uh, it's the World War I Memorial in Central Park. I used to walk by that memorial just about every single day. Beautiful memorial. And uh, this mob showed up. They desecrated the memorial. They burned an American flag at the base of this beautiful memorial. And it was all photographed. They videoed and photographed the entire thing. And so the NYPD is just enraged over this. And I think it was this was the line in the sand. This was the line in the sand. And the NYPD said, this is, this is enough. This is, we're done here. So they said, we need your help in finding out who did this. So there's a guy, and he is literally just, I guess, watching TV. And he realizes as they're showing this video that it's his son. His 16-year-old son is there, and he is vandalizing the World War I memorial. And it's fascinating because this guy, this dad in New York City, picks up the phone, and he actually calls the police and said, that's my kid. That's my kid. So the NYPD um, has shared a, a photograph, or rather they uh, shared a photograph on their social media. The kid is now in custody. They photographed him handcuffed to a chair. And the deputy police commissioner says, hey, look, this is not a case of kids just goofing around. This isn't like juvenile hijinks. This is an act of desecration. The people in that in that video desecrated this statue and they should be held accountable. So the high school junior, this kid's 16 years old, he's a high school junior and he is now facing felony charges along with misdemeanor charges. I mean the kids the kids in big trouble here. And I got to tell you, I I can't imagine what this dad is going through. I I don't know anything about this dad. I don't know his politics. I I don't know any of this stuff. But I do know this that it has to be a painful thing for a parent to go through to have to turn their own kid into the police. But hopefully, and, and you know the kid, the, clearly the kid's messed up in the head, but hopefully because of this dad's behavior and what this dad did, it's going to shock his son back into reality and maybe, maybe just maybe this kid grows up to be a productive member of society instead of some sort of, I don't know, patchouli-scented loon living in a tent. Let's go to Jackson, Tennessee. Mitch is listening to us on WTJS. Mitch, what would you do? I would not turn them in, Todd. I would make them turn themselves in, and I would be right behind them to make sure that it was done because there's so many more lessons there that can be. You can teach that child that you take responsibility, and you can also teach that child, look, I, you make mistakes, I make mistakes, I'm going to back you up, but you're going to pay for the mistakes because those mistakes come with consequences that have to be paid for and not by someone else, by you. You made the mistake. 
Mitch, this is this is great. This is a great idea and a great thought. Do you have kids yourself, Mitch? I do. I have three, and we've been through something similar to this. I had a middle child that took something that was not his, and I made him take it back to the individual. Then I made him apologize to the parents, and I made him tell the school what he had done as well. Wow, good for you. You know, I've seen. I don't know if you've seen this, Mitch, where. Some parents, they, they're, they're like hardcore, and if their kid, for example, steals something, you know, they'll make their kid stand out on a sidewalk intersection or something with a, with a billboard saying, you know, my, you know I, I, I'm a thief, and that's why I'm here. I, mean, it's, I don't know if I'd go that far, but I, I, like, I like this idea of, you know, teaching your kid, hey, there are consequences for your behavior. Absolutely. That sounds like a second offense. Uh and you step up, every offense gets a little more difficult until it hurts enough not to do it again. I, I'm, I come from an old school family. There would not have been a second offense <laughs> in my family. I, I'd have been gone. <laughs> oh, I understood entirely. We don't know where Todd went. <laughs> he, he gone. That's it. All right, Mitch. Hey, what a great, what a great idea. All right, Mitch. Thanks for listening. And wow, that's that's interesting. Mitch says that he would make make their kids um, turn themselves in, and and he'd be right there with them. And I think that really also sends a message that you know what, you're going to screw up in life, and you're going to make mistakes. You're going to do things that are wrong, but we're going to be there with you, and you're going to have to you're going to have to pay the consequences, but we're going to be there for you as a mom or or a dad. Uh, let's go to Libby in New Bern, North Carolina, the talk station, our great affiliate out there. All right, Libby, what would you do? Well, my son's 38, and I don't think he's ever broke, broken the law, but if he committed a murder or used a weapon like a gun or something, I'd have to turn him in because something would be mentally wrong, and I would, I would come to his rescue by turning him in. You do wonder... Libby, you do I'm, wonder about these kids that are shooting up the high schools and, you know, the parents are like, well, you know, we didn't realize that little little Billy had an arsenal in his bedroom. How do you not do that? You're a parent for crying out loud. Well, my, my, I've worked the prison system and I've seen a lot of kids screwed up because their parents didn't do anything or their parents were screwed up and they didn't have, you know, the, the knowledge to do what they needed to do, and it just bothers me. I think if my son were to do something horrible, yeah, I'd turn him in. I mean, if he burned a flag, I'd be pissed off. But And if he doesn't vote for Donald Trump, I'd be really mad. But, you know, that's not a police offense. But, <laughs> Is that a know. criminal offense? <laughs> yeah. But other than that, no, I don't know that I could. Uh, you know, yeah. murder or using a weapon, I could do it in a heartbeat because that's that means mentally something's off and he needs help. But uh, and I let's, think the let's, would do it. let's set murder aside for a moment, though. But you're saying, you know, would you rather handle it yourself? Oh, honey, I'd beat the hell out of him with a two by four. That's you so know, he, he regret whatever he did. But if he robbed a little old lady or some mess, I'm a little old lady. I'd, I'd definitely turn him in. Well, you this, know, but. This is good to know, Libby. I, I think your child would be would be like, call the police, <laughs> get me away from this woman. No, he think, he's afraid of me anyway. So I oh, mean, that's yeah, cool. he he would definitely, definitely call the police on himself probably before facing me. Libby, great call. You sound like a great mom, and I appreciate you calling in. You know, it's interesting. I think that's the problem. Is that there's I I mean I love my parents. But when I was a kid, I I feared my parents too. You know, I didn't want to screw up. I didn't want to get in trouble. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's actually healthy, knowing that your mother could very well beat you upside the head with a two by four. That's a, it's a real thing. Who knew? Uh, okay, real quick, let's go to OG in North Carolina. All right, OG, what's your story? <laughs> How you doing, buddy? I'm good. Hello. Uh, you know, about you know, uh, about eight or nine years old at a hardware store, I stuck my hand in a barrel of nails and stuck them in my pocket and got home. And my mother said, "Where'd you get those nails? You take those to that store." Grabbed me by the left ear, which is probably why it's a bit bigger than the right ear. Dragged me back to the store and made me turn them back to the store owner. Wow! So she marched you down there. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, she said, don't you ever embarrass me again. <laughs> wow. And and my That's question is, did you? Problem. OG, did you well, ever well, embarrass your mom? Me. Absolutely not. I told the mark. I bet you did. Good for you, OG. Good for you. What a great story. All right. Hey, OG, we got to run, uh, but thank you for calling in. I think it's great news that this dad turned his son in. And I don't know all the specifics of how it all went down, but I have to imagine it was devastating for this father to have to do this, but he had to do it. 